Hello, hello, hello. We are joined today by legendary composer David Wise. I am super pumped. David, thank you for like the millionth time for joining us. We are super excited to have you uh, this afternoon or evening. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be here and, and thank you very much for inviting me. It's, uh, yeah, that they're not being invited. So thank you. <laughs> Always, I hope so. Anyways, if it's better, if it starts to become better to not be invited, then I'm doing something really wrong. So, uh, um, uh, so we're going to be listening today to um, demo tracks from VGM Academy members, and I am going to largely get out of the way to give you a chance to talk to them directly and them a chance to to hear your feedback and uh, and discuss their track with you for a couple of minutes, um, which I think is a super exciting opportunity. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much. My 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 lovely wife heard my cry for coffee and and came and got me a cup. She's the best. Um, Absolutely. So uh, we're going to get started here. But before we jump in with the music, tell everyone who's watching who may not have heard about your awesome Salamandos project and where people can go to find out more about it because it sounds ridiculously amazing. Uh, okay, well, uh, years ago, I used to work for a company called Rare Limited, which is where I started my audio career. And one of the guys I used to work with is called Kevin Bayliss. Now, he's working at Playtonic, and we've got this kind of side project where we're doing video game concepts, ideas, and stuff. And uh, the idea was to have... Uh, I've, got, I've got my band called the Dave Wise Five. There's only four of us, but, you know, it sounds better that way. So um, it, it was kind of based on that and uh kev's got all these ideas with graphics so we thought we'd, we'd pull our ideas together and in, it's about two weeks now we're, we're about a week behind it was supposed to be right at the end of june and it's it's like an online comic audio book type thing where we've got um it, it's just a a chance to showcase our graphics and showcase my music in this thing called dkcreationslimited.com i think it is and it's, again, it's two weeks, and hopefully Dan will be able to let everybody know when it's actually live and, and available. And it's just that this first one, Salamandos, it's, it's based on um, amphibians, uh, salamanders. And um, so it's it's something that we're, it's a fun project for us. And it's just so that when we go to, we used to be before the world situation, we used to go to a lot of shows worldwide. And it's just nice to have something that we can say that we've done and promote that at shows rather than um, the, our back catalogue of stuff, which we always talk about, but it's nice to have something that we can sign and do that kind of thing. So that, that's where it came from. So in about two weeks' time, we should be live. Awesome. And as soon as that happens, let me know, and I will definitely put it out to, to right. this awesome community of folks. We'll, Absolutely. We'll be shouting it from the rooftops on Facebook and um, Twitter and probably everywhere else. Perfect. And if you want to check it out now and see the trailer or see um, the artwork and, the, and the, the music that's already up there in the trailer, which is an amazing theme song, by the way, oh, cool. um, you. you can go to the URL at the bottom of the screen. Which I've got to rewrite my pointing because I'm at the other side of the screen. No, okay. So you can go to salamandos.uk or .co.uk to check it out. So we're going to be hearing music from members who took part in a challenge earlier this month where they composed music based around this Salamandos theme. And each day they did a prompt based on something that, that David and I discussed beforehand. And so we're going to be bringing on some of these composers. And we're going to bring on the first one here to say hello and uh, introduce his track. And then we'll give it a listen. And then I'll just shut up and get out of the way so you guys can get to it. So first, let's bring on Jordan. So Jordan, welcome to the Hi, stream, Jordan. sir. Thank you. How's it going? It's great. How are you guys doing? We're good. Fantastic. Thank you. Right. Excellent. I'm going to say a different answer every time someone asks me that. I'll be like, now I'm doing terrible, and now I'm doing... Damn, but no, thanks I'm for asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coffee delivery, that makes everything. everything you know? Yeah, like, the coffee delivery yeah. brought a smile to my face. It's fantastic. Um, so, great. So, tell us a little bit about this track. This was your Tall Tower track that we're, we're going to be pulling up right now, by the way, because I know you gave me sort of two to look at. But tell us a little bit about this Tall Tower track, uh, and then I'll give it a play. Yeah, um... I just, by the way, I just got back from the beach, so I still have some, like, sunscreen in my eye. So if you guys see me, like, doing this, I mean, it's great to meet David Wise on here, you know, but I'm not crying. You know, it's not, I'm not there yet, you know. <laughs> not yet. Um, Give us a few minutes. Just give it a little time, yeah. Um, yeah, so this um, this one was the idea that I wanted to to try and loop. And 
so it ends it ends uh, a little abruptly but the idea is to try to get it to keep keep going and then um i wanted it to have like that sense of urgency um and honestly with the time that i had i kind of just just dove in you know and just tried tried to make something work that sounded serious but also sounded interesting and i tried to keep an electronic guitar um and then electronic sounds like all together for the whole salamandos thing so those are the instrumentations you know that i decided to go with excellent well it sounds um sounds like it should be uh, interesting we'll have a listen to it and see where we go yeah all right thank you here we oh what did i just do that didn't help oh that didn't help either there it is all right there's us all right cool all right now i'm going to fire up the good old screen share and let's give it a listen you guys i'm gonna get out of the way you two have at it and if you need me to replay anything let me know i'll be hiding in the background okay cool, cool. thank, thank you. you so um that, i mean the good thing about this challenge is people have to work quickly to to get something done so could i ask how long that took to um put together sure um light mixing and all maybe three hours maybe yeah. three and a half four hours uh-huh Cool. And and what what sort of door do you use, and and what are the instruments you're using there? Right now, I'm pretty bare. Um, so that was just on Logic Pro, um, just with my uh, keyboard, like just just with like the actual keyboard. Oh wow! Yeah, That's the cool. the interface I have right now doesn't have MIDI, and I, I do have a synth that I could have used, um, but just just to uh, quantize, you know, really quick and like get everything organized, I decided just to just to go with it, you know? So I'm kind of okay. in between interfaces right now. I want to get the the more capabilities to do more drum machines, like actual hardware and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah so. that's what I did for this. Okay, I think the, um, uh, for, for listening to it, the, when we started working at, at Rare, the, Tim, who was the artistic director, uh, he always mentioned that the intro is, is obviously the most important thing. It's the first thing people hear and it's going to attract people's attention. And so we've, we've got this chord sequence and what we want to do really is try and it's quite a static sequence. So with music, we always want to try and give it a bit more movement. So if, if, if it was me, I'd have had a nice soft pad underneath it and I'd have started suggesting the chords and then I'd have changed the chords or uh, probably using a filter so it got brighter. And also you really want those chords to sound quite pretty at the beginning because it's quite bare at that point. So start bringing those in over the eight balls or however long it is, and it would add a, a bit more uh, pique people's interest to to actually want to listen to the rest of the track. It's you've almost got too much too soon. However, if you were typing it on a keyboard, you know, I mean, that's 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 pretty awesome, really, to uh, to get it done in three hours by typing at a keyboard. Because the the other thing I was thinking that the the melody, first of all, it'd be nice if it was slightly louder. You really want to hear the melody all the time. Um, and it's got to it's got to stick out over over everything else. It was um, perhaps needs another sound in there or a, another frequency in there, just so it's bursting out as well. So it's um, it, it's kind of buried with the pad sound at the moment. Gotcha. And the the, the, the other thing I was going to say is it needs ideally more of a performance. But if you were typing it in on a keyboard, that's really hard. So 
just to give it a bit more life. So things like pitch shifts, but the modulation, anything that can give it a bit more life and, and make it talk a bit more is always going to help be helpful. But obviously when you're using a QWERTY keyboard, that's, that's always going to be quite a challenge, isn't it? Right. Right. And, uh, the, the whole thing about the Salamander singer, it's, it's rooted in the eighties. Um, so having those big snare drums is, um, very 80s really and you know those those horrendous kick drums that just overpower everything yeah i um, i was thinking about with um some of the sounds i love um a lot of 80s sounds that are modern now um a lot of the drum machine sort of sounds and a lot of the synth sounds i feel like um you know i grew up mostly in the 90s and some of that stuff was still kind of in the early 90s was kind of like met you know seemed like it was kind of meshed together some sometimes you'll hear a 1991 track as opposed to an 87 track and it's kind of like which is it you know so with this i wanted to try that as well like just have like modern um like 16-bit kind of time you know but um yeah. but more modern sounds sure and i think sticking out because you, you, the progression is, is obviously very nice so uh, again to add a bit of interest it'd be nice to get a squeeze a few arpeggios in there as well and bring them in and out and also perhaps um when they're doing that change the sound slightly just again just to add more variety and interest and, and keep people's attention all the, all the way through it um and going back to those 80s types of sounds the i've been i've been using a lot of sounds from cherry audio i don't know if you've seen mm -hmm. cherry audio at all they do these kind of retro synths so they've got a, a juno 106 i've got the the oberheim and the, the, the one i got last week was called the ps20 which is um 42 years ago korg did the ms20 which is monophonic so they've taken that idea and they've got the, the kind of essence and character of of that synth uh it's called the ps20 but it's polyphonic as well and um but things like that they're, they're only 29 dollars which isn't a, a whole lot of money but it's certainly got bags of 80s vibe in there so that their synths are definitely worth looking out for that kind of thing and, and the other thing that's worth saying as well even if you're taking 80s sounds the fact that we've got all these tools from um that, reason and spectrosonics you can take those sounds and do something really interesting or add your own kind of character to them so that's all all good fun but um yeah considering cool. uh, you, you managed to do that on a keyboard in three hours that's very impressive thanks thank you yeah I'm definitely in a time where i'm working with what i have you know um try not to get let it get in the way it's so easy to to make the the list of gear that you want you know and and that's been a challenge for me you know creatively to like just dive in you know because i could hook these up but um but it's not you know exactly what i'm what i'm like looking to use them for so but as soon as i get that the interface with some more inputs it's gonna be a bit easier <laughs> yeah completely yeah and i see you've got a couple of guitars as well so i'll yeah. be throwing those in as well i've got um drums as well they're not set up and that's my primary instrument my background is primarily in, in drums and percussion um and then uh so i kind of you know still play and perform around around my local scene and stuff but um really you know focusing more on keyboards and and more on uh composing and stuff like that yeah well when i, I first got plucked out of the streets of leicester in the uk i was selling drums in a in a music shop and very cool my that very, they, they were my instrument at the time, but um, I, I wasn't that good at keeping time, to be honest. So uh, uh, I soon morphed over to the keyboards, and you always, always got a lot more gigs doing keyboards than drums. Yeah, for sure. That's I feel like I'm the opposite. You know, rhythm, time, feel, all that stuff is no problem. But learning melody, chords, harmony, all that stuff is t is totally something that I've I've been focusing a lot more on. Great stuff. Well, you're certainly going in the right direction. So it'd be interesting to hear some uh, well, uh, developed stuff, either that track or some more. Thank you. All right. I uh, completely relate to the not being on, like, my timing with drums and really actually with the guitar. I, I sound great as a soloist uh, playing guitar, but if I play with a drummer, uh, it's very obvious very quickly how bad I am at playing to a very tight beat. So that was yeah. the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, Jordan, thank you so much for sharing your music. And David, thanks so much for, for giving it a listen. And we're going to pop Jordan off the stream. I dropped the link in, in the chat earlier so everyone can uh, pop over to Jordan's track on SoundCloud and give it a like. Um, but thanks, Jordan. We will see you next time or see you yeah. later. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you so much. And 
Nice to meet you too. Thanks for being here, David. And Donkey Kong Country, that that game in particular really set me on on my path, you know, when I was a kid. So I really Excellent. appreciate you. Yeah. Excellent. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you for saying. All right. So we are underway. Next uh, next up, we're going to have uh, Virginia. I believe Virginia's coming up next. Yep. So Virginia's coming on up next. And let me add her to the stream quick and she can introduce her track. Here we go. Hi, Virginia. Hello. How's it going? Hi, Virginia. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. All right. Um, so, Virginia, tell us a little bit about your track before we give it a listen. Sure. Um, so, my track is the Day 7 Big Baddie track. And um, it's basically uh, combined with uh, every day I did 10 seconds. So, on the last day, I was like, I'm going to take all those 10 seconds and put them together into one big mashup um so um yeah i kind of had everything to work with and uh, it's no guitar um i would have liked to put guitar but i'm a pianist <laughs> um, so no, no guitar but uh, lots of synth and um very very fun and yeah i had loads of fun doing it and i think the project is really exciting <laughs> cool. so Excellent. i got really into it <laughs> yeah i'm looking forward to hearing awesome all right so here we go i'll play it and i'm gonna get out of the way um for you two to chat afterwards here is virginia's day seven big batty I like that. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, my, my immediate thoughts on that are the um, the, the end, oh, it's towards the end, where you've got the drums and they're, they're just kind of doing their thing and then you build it back up. I would, for me, I'd start with that. I think that really stands out. That's definitely enough to draw somebody's attention and then go back to the beginning of the track 
Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Because that, then when you come back in with it later, it would sort of yeah. off, off nice. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it's easy to say because, you know, with all of these ideas, you only had seven days, you've got to work very quickly. So yes, um, so I, I completely understand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think for, for any track you've got to let it percolate for a while and come back to it and yeah well luckily i had all those segments to work with of like yes. themes and i kind of put all those themes together so um i mean without hearing them alone first and then coming to listen to this uh out before um does that make sense like listening to this after would make more sense but um uh yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good to have so many different ideas because um, yeah. it, it, it adds interest. And then when you try and fuse them all together, it, yeah, again, it, it's it's adding um, it, and interest it's, throughout the track. It's kind of like uh, the memory of the previous things in the game that happened because the, the song starts with actually the character select theme. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like reminding you of all those all the music that you've heard throughout the game at the end of the game in a big sequence yeah the um just just one well, well, a few things to um bear in mind are the there's a pad sound that you use quite a lot throughout it mm. and it gets in the way sometimes of the melody so you can't quite hear the melody um, okay clearly enough so i mean it's a support it's a really important um, tool that the, the pad sound because it's supporting the melody, but sometimes it's clashing with it. Right. So EQing it, um, trying a different sound, um, just yeah. to take the sound away because it still needs to support. The sure. But um, trying something. And also, you've, you've also got a, a point where there's two different melodies which are both nice, but they they, they kind of clash with each other as well. Mm. So just bearing that in mind because you don't really want one to cancel the other one out. It'd be nice to have one and then perhaps go to the other, and then sure. Maybe if you bung one up um, an octave, ah, uh, yeah, in, then it's not not going to clash, and they both work nicely together at that point. So they're they're fighting for space at the moment. Mm. So you've got to clear some of the frequencies out, so you know people can hear what, what you've done. And and again, that the the um, that the pad sound doesn't help in those situations. So it, it, yeah, it's, so I think it's always nice when you start with the pad sound to kind of ditch it. And then yeah. you sing out. But yeah. It really does, because um, the other thing is you need bills. So when you bring it back in later on, it has a real impact, as in it feels as though it's building up. Sure. And, uh, so just little bills like that just to add a bit of dynamics. But then you have that break on its own with just the drums. And again, things like that, they're, they're, they're sort of, without being rude, I, I don't, it's almost cheesy, but it works so, so <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> Listen to breathe a bit, and then when you bring it back in, and then of course you went to that drum bit as well after that, and that had got a real, real power and force. So I mean, cheese yeah, is good. Like, cheese is good sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I did this game which called Diddy Kong Racing, and, and we just got the cheese out, and then some more some <laughs> butter, and We just we made it on purpose as cheesy as possible, and it's just. Yeah. I think as long as it, you know, things like that just make tracks fun. So it's definitely worth yeah. noticing, and it works so well in in that scenario. Thank you. <laughs> so good, good, good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, that was like one of the very first times I did synth stuff. By the way, I'm I'm still a very beginner with uh, synthesizers. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I, I feel like that, and I've been doing it for decades. So <laughs> never so stop that feeling. Learning. Never goes away, Virginia. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> Uh, well, Virginia, thank you so much for sharing your music with us today and thank you uh, both. bravely putting it out here uh, and uh, having giving Dave and I a chance to hear it. So thanks again. No, thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right. We are going to we are off to a great start so far. Uh, folks, if you're in the comments, uh, hopefully you're you're having a good time. I'm having a good time, especially I get to just get out of the way and, and hear David talk more. Last time I felt like I was talking way too much so now i'm this is a, a much better balance for me so cool. um great let's uh invite our next composer on and we'll just keep the good times rolling and david are you have i mean i gotta ask are you having a good time as well i am absolutely yeah it's nice to um hear, hear things um and, and again when you when you hear stuff that other people do it reminds you of your own work and and what you can do to improve it, your own stuff that you're writing so it's always good to have these kind of analytical things. So it's all good.
Awesome. Uh, so this next uh, composer, Fotis, is uh, joining us from over in Greece. He is like our unofficial Greek ambassador for VGM Academy over there. I just made hi, that up hi. just now. But Hello. Uh, hi, hi, Fotis. I, I saw Tsitsipas um, win whatever match he was winning against the British oh. guy today. So uh, yeah, it was quite fun. Good player. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Fotis, tell us about your, uh, your track before we give it a listen here. So this was my uh, idea for the main theme of Salamandos. It's a simple, straight up, uh, bombastic rock thing with simple power chords. I wanted something that goes in your face when you boot up the game. And also I composed this track just a few hours after I got my first dose of AstraZeneca vaccine. So uh, yes. you could say that the genre of this track is uh, post-vaccination rock. So yeah, it's, it's Vax work. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I had a, a, a similar kind of thing post Vac and I, I wish oh. I'd have postponed what I was doing because I just was I was I was a bit mm, spaced out after that. Oh so. yeah. Uh, but I was spaced out while uh, well writing the track. Yeah, so give it at least two days before you do anything important after a yeah. vac. Yes indeed. Too late. <laughs> and get yes. vaccinated, everyone, exactly. if you haven't yet. Yeah. So all right, let's give it a listen. Enough of enough uh enough about medicine let's talk music here we go here's photos's day one title screen let's okay. give it a listen <laughs> There we go. That's um, I like that. That's um, uh, concise and to the point. Definitely punches home as well. What did yeah. you use for the guitar sound? Uh, AAS drum session. Okay. It's a gu guitar synth. Uh -huh. Yeah, it sounds. Uh, I think I was saying last time I, I like guitar synths uh, rather oh. than just guitars because they. I, I don't know. There's something because they've been compressed so much. They really like hit home, don't they? Yeah, so, and uh, like you can you can. Uh, emulate those high frequency screeching that you can do with samples. Yes. And also, uh, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, I will. But I actually designed the drum plugin myself. I have a friend from that's a drummer who recorded the samples and we have out, we have it out for free slash donation where it's called oh, Organic Kalski Kit. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm a bit embarrassed that I mixed the snare a bit low. I failed at my own plugin. But yeah, <laughs> did you like the drum sound? Oh, no, no, I think it's important. We've all got to um, uh, take the opportunity when we have it. It's all good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like the fact that I tell you what I did like. And um, again, it's it's almost cheesy, but it's not. It's that the stamps, they work so well because they're, they're obviously at the higher frequency and, and they're in between bits. So yeah. it really does a lot to... Um, define the melody and put it into nice chunks uh -huh. which is, is really good so i did like those those stabs that was good uh, i thought the organ sound was um cool as well it really goes with the guitar sample so that they, they play off each other without yeah. fighting the rock organ them. yeah absolutely and also i like the nice um, sound effects at the end i enjoyed that i was just set the um or finish the, the setting off very very nicely so that was all good uh -huh. thank you so yeah i, I like that that's good Thanks. It, you know, it, it's, it's very compact. It does what it's meant to. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good. Thank you. My doorbell just rang. It, it, it did indeed. It. Yes, I, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect timing then. Um, so uh, thanks so much, Fotis, for the track. I love the brass and the electric guitar combo on that. I thought that was super exciting for me yeah it's sort of, sort of funky and rocky at the same time isn't it at that point yes indeed yeah i think that's that's a really fun thing that video game music can do it can kind of slap together 
sort of different sounds from different genres a little bit easier and get away with it uh within yeah i think on the whole uh you you've probably got a bit more experimentation with video games and you can get away with it a bit more so it, it does um it almost encourage it doesn't it it does indeed all right, we're going to just keep it rolling here. So next we have uh, Chloe. Chloe's going to join the stream here. Let me bring her on. Hello, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. How's it going? My heart is pounding. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We're usually very nice. Yeah, I've heard yeah. Dan, Dan has this effect on people. Yes. That's, yeah, that's, oh, that's it. That's totally it. It's definitely me. Um so, uh, so Chloe, why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, your day four track, right? This is from day four? Yes. Yeah, so um, it was supposed to be the Dark Queen. I have to admit, I'm not very good with prompts right now because I'm actually trying to write a soundtrack. And so all of my prompts kind of like become something else. Um, and so I wrote a Dark Queen and then now it's going to be repurposed um, into our upcoming game. Um during a part where you're in the forest and you, um, you notice it starts raining and then it's the second phase then is going to be skeletons are coming up and then the third phase is going to be a race. So I kind of, I don't know which version you're going to play, but there is kind of a, kind of a janky second phase going on at the end that I did update. I updated the track. So yeah. That's good. Well, <laughs> Uh, I, I often um, repurpose things, so it's it's all part of the course. Really. <laughs> well, thanks yeah. for the prompt anyway, though, because it did cause me to write the the melody, That's... the initial melody. So <laughs> whatever works. <laughs> yeah, it's, I always get really sad whenever I hear someone mention their hard drive that has unused music on it. That always makes me feel super sad. Just like the ghosts of music past. Just so it's always good to hear that no matter what a the idea can get repurposed, so it's fantastic. All right, let's give it a listen, and then I'm going to be out of the way. Here is Chloe's day four. <laughs> So I kind of wanted to let you know that I, I'm going to change the melody. I'm not just going to keep doing the same melody over and over again. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a nice melody. I, I like the melody. It's it's good, and I like the harmony, the, the one that comes in with the piano as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they work together is is very good, and it's very easy to hear the melody, which is always a plus. Um, so, it, I mean, you give it a bit of variation, um, but essentially, it's um, it, it's working for me. I, I like that. So and, and the chords that back it up are, are cool as well. So it'd be quite easy to add another melody there, and that's using the same chord progression, but just give it a bit of variation. Then come back with that melody, which is always nice. Uh, I like the way you brought the strings in later on as well. Uh, you know the low strings, which I thought was cool. So you've got your melody, and then you know you've, you've got the supporting strings coming through later on, which is good. Uh, gives it a good, good progression. And uh, the the only thing that I change really is the the, the percussion. It's um, it, it's kind of clashing a bit too much. It's it's too prominent. Mm -hmm. so yeah, a bit more variation and throw it back in the mix a, a little more. 
Yeah, that was initially not supposed to be straight percussion. Um, it's really supposed to be more of a Spanish guitar, but I do not have a Spanish guitar sound. Um, and I think that it would be wonderful if I did, um, because then I could add some real percussion there <laughs> or not and save it for the rave. <laughs> yeah, it just it just was just too, it was taking too much of the sort of frequency domain and it was yeah. taking away from, from your lovely melody really so I'd, I'd really try and push the percussion back and to the sides really so it's not clashing right right but um, yeah I, I like that track I, I, i've heard that one before so uh it, it's nice it's good good stuff thank you thank you very much <laughs> unmuted there we go that means it's also memorable so that's fantastic because exactly. he remembered that's... it from a week ago always a plus <laughs> so, awesome well chloe thank you so much for joining yes. us today and sharing your music with us bravely on the air absolutely so, thank you chloe enjoyed that it's good yeah awesome all righty so next we're going to bring up uh kirill so let me add kirill to the stream here there he is Whew. hello david how's it going sir <laughs> uh I'm, I'm gonna say the same thing as chloe i'm like I'm like about to pass out. <laughs> uh, well, if you if you do, it'll become a really funny clip that goes viral on the internet. So no pressure. <laughs> That's all good. That's all so, good. No um, pressure. So uh, I'm gonna introduce, I guess, to you, David, whatever okay. this, this is about. Brilliant. Um, Far so, away. So, so being your fan for many years since like ninety. 95, I think that's when my SNS mm -hmm. got. I, I really like your tracks a lot. So this track Thank is you. kind of, uh, to some degree, maybe structurally more than anything else, inspired by the, the King Kurul from part two. Uh -huh. Yeah, which is like, I really like a lot. And it's, I mean, it doesn't sound the same. It's just I, I wanted to use similar structure, how it changes. So it goes from one part to another. There is probably a fair enough of ostinato in there, but uh, probably mainly because of the time frame. Um, I did came back to it a few times. I think I'm on a final mix number three now. <laughs> so uh, uh, you'll hear the most uh, updated version, I guess, which is I haven't changed for a few days. But okay. Yeah. Nice. So that's that. <laughs> no, nice one. All right. Oh, and this is a big boss. OK. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Decent. I always find Trying. writing big boss music really hard. I mean. Writing means it's never easy. It's always a challenge, but it's never mm -hmm. dull. So it's yeah, it's never unenjoyable. But mm -hmm. it's uh, but especially with bosses, I, I always find those a bit bit of a challenge. And same time, I want to say I didn't want it to make it gigantic. You know what I mean? Like I didn't want to make the music to be too much coming out because I was thinking also about sound effects could that could be up on the front. You know what I mean? Like in the game experience part. So that's probably. That's another thing I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point. When when you're <clears throat> displaying music to somebody who's probably never heard your work before, never heard it in, in their game, it's probably worth adding bits of interest. But when you're actually in game, you, you certainly don't want your music to clash with any of the sound effects. Mm -hmm. But until you're actually working and you're in development, you'll, you'll yeah. never know that. So there's always a lot of iteration involved when you're writing music. Surely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's give it a listen. Here is Kirill's Day 7 Final Boss Bash. Here we go.
There we go, Kira. So um, it's, it certainly sets the scene. Uh, I like the, the synth sound. That's um, uh, very kind of 80s <coughs> type of thing. Um, and there's some nice melody ideas as well that you've got there that go with the chord sequence. Cool. Uh, I think what we need to do, uh, if I was to add any feedback, would be to try and eke out those melodies and define things a bit more. So I'd start off with, um, if you can add some more weight to the drums, mm -hmm. And the, the, as I say, the melody is nice, but we want to try and uh, develop it perhaps a bit more. So we've got this part A, and it's like we're, we're, we're just in part A. If you had a related melody in a part B, then you could ping pong between A, B, a revision of A, another revision of B, which would just add a bit more um, interest. And if you could give the, um, the, the, the arrangement for A and B a slight slightly different tone it would really help bring a and b out but it's it really just set the tone nicely for the um for where it's supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, as in stuck in the 80s and ashamedly with um some of those synth sounds <laughs> and the, the the other thing as well is some <laughs> of that pad sound is probably got a bit too much reverb on it's possible because, um, and because of that it's taking too much of the frequency mm -hmm domain you've got it's hard to pick things out mm -hmm. so perhaps either eqing it or rolling off some of the um reverb or some of the effects that you've got on there so it's not washing everything together i mean sometimes it's nice to do that um so perhaps bring it in at the beginning ditch it for a while and then again bring it back in and it'll just give your melody a bit more chance to to breathe a bit <laughs> but um overall it it certainly sets the scene there so that's that's good good work did you notice the, the orchestra hits? The ding. I did, yes. Uh, I, I love like those. The, <laughs> the, the, the retro kind of um, uh, yeah, yeah. thing. So uh, I think I used, used to use the same sound back in the... Um, that was dedicated to you specifically. Oh, that's the, yes, the it, Super it, it, Nintendo it, ding. It, it didn't go unnoticed, so that's cool. So, uh, and I'll tell you the secret also. I actually did have three more tunes um, that I want to compose. I, I mean, I already made them, but I haven't played them yet. So I just wanted to make... This is the first part, basically, stage one, sort yes. of speaking. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I have two more or three more, uh -huh. which will be different melodies and different, probably more intensity and stuff like that. But thank you so much for the criticism. I appreciate well, well, it very much. It's not really meant to be um, criticizing. That, that would be the wrong word. I'm just saying... Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I do the same to myself every time. So I'll, I'll come up with a sketch and then I'll mm -hmm. sit there and go, you know what, I mm -hmm. don't really like that melody. I've just composed there. This is what I would do. And I'm making notes all the time. So I'm just doing the same thing mm -hmm. or going through the same process that I go through with, with myself, uh, just ideas to try. I mean, sometimes I might be completely wrong mm -hmm. and um, sometimes they are. So. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm just sort of saying that these are the sort of things that, that I try. I think that the main thing there is the um, uh, you're not doing yourself any favors with the reverb on that lower pad sound because those, especially mm -hmm. in that just above the bass line, sort of I don't know, yeah, that kind of middle area in the in the frequency spectrum, can mm -hmm. really muddy things up. So um, it will really help your your mix if you can lose some of the information there. I'll look into this. I do have the high pass filter on a reverb bridge and I use the waves reverb so it does yes. it yeah. does has the EQ on it so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll definitely look into those things yeah I mean if you shave the obviously <coughs> top, top end off because you don't need the high-end detail because that kind of mm -hmm. becomes like uh, irritating after a while if you mm -hmm. shave the lower end off so you've just got the, the mid range and then it, it takes it, it'll just make it easier to, to do a mix with that point mm -hmm. cool thanks so much but yeah thank you for sharing it's good stuff yeah, thank Kirill, you, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your music as always. Kirill's always, he is he is very frequently on our member roundtables uh, that we do every month uh, to stuff. get feedback and give feedback and help people out. So uh, he's uh -huh. an awesome part of the community and so glad to have you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always good to have, have feedback. It, it kind of helps. And But yeah, I know sometimes it comes across as criticism, but then sometimes that criticism can be really useful. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and, constructive. And constructive. Yes, absolutely. I get criticised a lot, so uh, it's <laughs> always room for a bit of constructive criticism. Indeed. Oh, no, absolutely. There was a constructive. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. All right, well, Carol, 
Thanks so much, buddy, and I will see you you. soon. Have a good one. All right. We're going to keep rolling right along here. So we're going to bring on Michelle next. So let's add Michelle to the stream here. Hey, Michelle. How's it going? Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Is is my audio good? Can you hear me all right? Audio is very good. Sounds Mine's going to be a bit bad because the hard drive has just decided to up, um, peek in for some bizarre reason. It's probably oh. somebody data mining on my uh, CPU or something spurious like that. Well, no well you worries. sound fantastic. And yeah. it's just an honor to meet you. Thank you. Oh, that's too kind. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Michelle, tell us about your uh, tell us about your track here before we give it a listen. Uh, yes. Well, you know, as, as Mr. Wise has pointed out uh, about the, the boss music and it being a challenge, I, I also think that the boss music also is, really is, just provides that impactful conclusion to the game. And actually, as, as Kirill had it too, his instrumentation was great. I, I love the last boss music for your game too, uh, Donkey Kong's uh, Diddy, Diddy's Conquest. And actually, I have to show you how much a fan I am. I, uh, I got this for my birthday a few months ago. Excellent. And, cool. Good and stuff. A little bit of a, a rareware um, shirt. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Uh, so, I was thinking more, uh, you know, even starting with day one, I wanted to at least harmonically, uh, if not so much instrumentation, at least harmonically uh, work with what your theme song was on, on your trailer with, with you and, and Kevin Bayless. Oh, and you. so I, it started morphing into this more techno um, RPG or JRPG vibe, which I was really happy how, how it turned out because I, I've, not, I've only played a few RPG games um, back in the day, but I've, I remember being very impacted um, by that kind of genre. And I think for the, the boss music, it has to have the momentum, it has to have the drive, but also has to have the heroism behind it. The, the, the protagonist um, or the team, they, they got to take down the big baddie. So the showdown is the best part, really. That's that's the part you're working toward. And um, so that the, the energy was what I was after and also um, a, a heroic melody as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's definitely good to have those, those both things. I, I always try and do that as well with boss themes. So you've got the boss theme that you can then take and adapt, especially when he's losing. And then you've got your heroic film. Uh, sorry, heroic theme that hopefully you can bring in towards the end of it when you're um, whooping him later on. Yes. <laughs> All right. So here is Michelle's. Now, Michelle, we're going to try the YouTube link. We're going right. to see how it, the, we had a little, this gave us a little, tr- little trouble last time, but she's got the SoundCloud link. I've got that just in case, but it looks like YouTube's working okay for us today. Excellent. So if not, um, you know, oh well. Here we go. Here is Michelle's Day 7 Big Baddie Showdown. Let's give it a listen.
lovely. There we go. Um, definitely liking the uh, retro feel there. Thank you. It, um, it definitely goes back to that kind of time. It's, it's almost, um, I don't know, I mean, there were quite a few SNES type games and more um, Genesis type games, you know, where they use an FM chip. Um, oh, often, wow. Thank you. Often use that kind of diddly 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 type thing, which is great. But to give it more impact, I'd take it away for a while or take it down in the mix and then bring it back at the end because again anything that's dynamic um which you said at the beginning and you've let people know about it if you can bury it for a while and then bring it back especially towards the end it really starts to hit home so that there's some nice melodies in there um that again that synth that i've just mentioned the one that's always there that's fighting for space a bit at times so again that's another reason for perhaps taking it down but then Obviously, when you've got your heroic bit at the end, you're allowed to put everything in and just go for it. But if mm -hmm. you can get a bit more definition in in the rest of the track, it would really set it up so it's telling a story. So we're introducing the hero theme, and then we're introducing the, the kind of main techno synth that comes in in there, um, uh, just to make it a bit more dynamic and, and and give you that kind of interest. That's what what I'd be looking to do there. But it's easy for me sitting over here, you know. Uh, listening to it objectively it's very hard i find it really hard to be objective to myself so um oh no thank thank you very much for your input are you recommending that i um have have the instrumentation stripped down at the start and then uh, no, no, no i think i think it's nice the way it introduces itself at the beginning so you've got eight or 16 bars of, of the full arrangement then i think we want to play with the arrangement a bit and okay. perhaps take take some things down Another thing that you might want to try as well, you've got the drums firing away all, all the time as well. About three quarters of the way, if you could just strip it down so it's half time as well and, and right, play with that's that. Cool. And then, yeah. then when you come back in with the full rhythm, that will really um, hit home. And again, if you get a transition as well, when you go from the half time bit to the, the thing, um, it's a synth called Spectrosonics so Omnisphere, they've got loads of um, yes it's really cheesy type of um uh, transitions but they, they work every time so if you had something that was like low in pitch kind of rising up uh, yeah. and then when you hit that um full rhythm again that would really um shout i'm, I'm back but um very nice work yeah thank you oh thank you uh, those are those are great ideas yeah i really very much appreciate that well, I don't know whether they'd work. It's just that that's what I'd be trying if I was doing it next. So, uh, and, and sometimes I have these great ideas, or at least I think they're great. And I put them in, and by the time you put it in, you go, oh, no, no. So, <laughs> I can understand that process. <laughs> yeah. I think we can all probably understand that feeling. <laughs> and um, also, as well, there, there's something, uh, there's a band over here called Take That, and, and Gary Bolo was saying something about, um, you know, you've got to be aware of the time that you're in mm -hmm. and, and very much so like today you could try something and by the time you wake up tomorrow and you listen to it back you go no so it, it's it's very much if something's working um just go with it really yeah absolutely yeah i def definitely do i i love um i love your idea of of the cut time because even if it as, as it slows down or, or something is stripped as far as material or substance, it, it still gives you that new sense of momentum. So that's a really yeah, good idea. Absolutely. And also, if you if you did slow it down, it means then the drums can be bigger because they've got more, you know, they've got twice as much time to breathe. So you can really get away with adding some like really big reverb sounds in and then um, take those out when you come back in with the, the, the full time. I will definitely work with that. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. Excellent. Thank you awesome. very much for sharing. Yeah, thanks so much, Michelle, for sharing your music and joining us this afternoon slash evening slash maybe morning, depending on where you are in the world. So yeah, it's, uh, it's eight o'clock at night here, so uh, mm -hmm. or in the evening. Awesome. All right. Well, let's keep it going. Then we got two more. Can we get two more in quick, David? I think we've got. I think so. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's go. Excellent. For so we're gonna bring on Jessica onto the stream oh. next. Hey, Jessica, how's it going? Hello. Good. How are Hi, you, Dan? Hi, David. Hello. I'm Hi. doing excellent. Okay. Um, so tell us a bit about your, this is your day three track from the challenge, right? And this was the uh, the fighting prompt. Am I remembering that? That's the fighting prompt, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think so. It was the jungle fight, I believe. Cool. So tell us about it. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of like 
a vibe I've been getting into lately before even the challenge. Um, I've been really enjoying using like a lot of uh, marimba type percussive instruments in my tracks. And, um, and I thought this would be a good like beach scene, maybe like a fight on a beach or in a, in a tropical like, environment. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like marimba. I obviously, use it quite a bit, but it, it's quite—it's quite a. Um, a let's see, it's quite an adaptable instrument. So it works well as bass. It works well for melodies, and it's great for chords as well. Yeah, kind of like the piano. A bit like the piano, yeah, but it's—it's mm -hmm. it's not as. I don't know. It's not as sound as the piano. It's a lot happier, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really make the marimba sound too dark. You can't, no. And, and I Maybe like I could. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the new prompt next challenge. It's going to be dark marimbas. It's going to be day one. Yeah. So, how, how dark can you go? How dark can the marimba go? That'd be fun. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. That, sounds, that does actually sound like a good challenge to have. Yeah. It does actually sound like a good challenge. It's, it's always a good idea as well, or, or a good... Um, practice to take something that's happy and then do a darker version of it to say how yes. low can you go yeah or have a yeah, have something that is out. when you've got lyrics to play with have have the happy feeling juxtaposed with the really angry or upsetting yeah. lyrics that's always a, a lot of fun <laughs> as well um, yeah. <laughs> but enough about that let's get to jessica's track <laughs> All right. and give it a listen here is jessica's day three <laughs> Jungle fight. Here we go. There we go. That was very stylized, uh, very different, which is good. It's nice to have something unpredictable. <laughs> I, I realized that I actually did make the marimbas sound dark. I forgot about oh, that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yes, that's, that's definitely a dark, dark mar marimba vibe there. <laughs> and I, I like the way you've, you've kind of morphed it into an inharmonic pad as well, and then taken that and turned it back into the melody. Thank you. Quite, quite inspired. Um, Thank you so much. Years ago, called Mozart, who was um, he was quite prolific in his time. And I always yes. love the way that he did start the melody on one, one instrument and then give it to another instrument to take over. You mm -hmm. didn't re really realize you just took it as red, but then when you start to analyze it, you realize that he's been quite clever by yeah. it on one instrument and, and then going somewhere else with it. So it's nice to do something similar with your your pad that kind of the melody morphed into that and it sort of takes it out from there. So that was that was clever. I like that. Thank you so um, much. That's a huge compliment. We need to do more of that. That's a that's a good technique, really. The, the other thing <laughs> that I liked as well, because it's it's quite unsettling, which is good. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you don't need everything to be the same all the time. Mm -hmm. And there's in the bass end because it was quite sparse in the middle. You got your, your nice kind of pads up there and, and sounds there, and also you got that kind of bass noise as well. It's almost yeah. like squelchy bass. And because there was nothing in the middle, you could really hear that. And that's that's a good technique as well. So I like that. That's good. Thank you. So very, Thank you so much. <laughs> very stylized. I wasn't expecting that, but it was nice to hear it. <laughs> good. I like to surprise you. <laughs> good. That's good. Relax yes. Practice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For and I'm a, I'm a piano teacher, so I love, love Mozart so much. <laughs> oh, so, yes. So, yeah. so do I. I also yeah. Like Beethoven as well. He was a, a oh, yeah. inspiration to me. Yes. And all the um, Russian composers, I think, are phenomenal. They're, they're really oh, yeah. cool. So, yes, for sure. And, um, <laughs> Those other guys. 
Yes. All those other great Russian composers. Exactly. <laughs> well, David. thank you. Thank you, David. Thank David, you. I'm curious, David, um, what about what about uh, Beethoven uh, was really inspiring to you? Uh, the first one that really, uh, probably it was when I was doing piano lessons, it was Moonlight Sonata. And even though mm. I've played it a million times, it's still a great piece, which is, yeah. you know, it's, it's very rare that you can have something that can be played so many millions of times and still sound great and iconic. Because as soon as you hear it, oh yeah, Moonlight Sonata, and you just stop and listen to it because it's Moonlight Sonata. And that there are very few pieces in the world that have that effect on me. And there's billions of pieces of music. Awesome. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for sharing your dark marimba with us this afternoon, <laughs> evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. And You uh, are so welcome. Yeah. Thank um, you. <laughs> Thank you. Our pleasure. Uh, all righty. So uh, we'll uh, move right along to our final combatant of the stream. One, where is he in the list? There he is. Pete. Hey there. He's Hi. Here. Pete, welcome. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How's everybody? Uh, Dan, are you going to give me a new answer tonight? You know, I'll, I'll maintain that I'm doing well. I'm okay. doing super. So good. Although I yeah. did just get to the end of the coffee cup. So oh. at this point, forward. It's all downhill from here, it, man. It could be. It's, Mostly for all me. bets are off. Mostly for myself. It's okay. All bets are off. So, um, but otherwise, I'm doing great. So, why don't you tell us a bit about your your piece, Salamandos okay. Big Bad? Okay. So, uh, final piece for the for the challenge. Uh, I kind of wanted to give the Dark Queen a chance to peacock a little bit. So in, in my mind, you know, write it in a scene, right? So the salamanders show up to come fight the big bad, finally. And she's mm. there and she has all of her minions. She's like, hey, watch me beat these guys. She's gonna lose, don't worry. You know, she's absolutely gonna lose. But in the meantime, I wanted to give her a chance to strut a little bit. So I went with this. Cool, it's good to have minions. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's give it a listen here we go here is day seven salamandos big bad So you can hear a loop point there. So that's all right. Loop points are good. It's nice to um, hear things mm -hmm. more than once. So I, I like the. It's got a. Have you ever listened to a band called The Sweet? Uh, no, no, I have not. Oh, I see. Um, it's kind of got. There were a band called The Sweet years and years ago, okay. but it's even before my time. 
and um, it's kind of got that vibe to it, that kind of okay. 70s rock type thing. And I like, yeah. I like the way I like the triplets because it's again, it's it's not four four, uh, so mm. it's not totally expected, mm -hmm. and it's fun, so it's not taking itself too seriously, which is cool. And um, obviously, the guitar sound is nice and easy to listen to. Yeah. Um, the, Great patch, um, actually. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it it's kind of fun. I like that. I like the um, tempo as well. Yeah. Um, it's it's it almost plods, but it doesn't, which is good because it's, right. it's a big baddie, and you know it needs to have a bit of weight to it. So you've definitely achieved the sort of bigness of having a a, a big boss. Yeah. The, uh, the the only thing I I probably put in is um, some rhythmic. Um, oh yeah. Synth, synth sounds in it just too. Sort of go off and step out a bit of the okay. to the, the, the top to the sides. Uh, yeah, so using through, through through the track just to add a bit more rhythmic interest in the background. Uh, okay, yeah, that's to, great. Just to highlight the guitar because you've got the guitar; it, it's very mm. loud. It's in the middle, which is great. It's where you want it to be. If you've got a few bits going off, sort of left and right, and to the <laughs> back, it would just even center what you've got in the middle even more. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's, yeah, good stuff. I would totally Thank you very that. much for sharing. Thank you. That. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Pete, for sharing your music. Thank you. Cheers, Pete. And uh, we're going to bring everyone back on for just one final thank you and goodbye to David here. I'm going to bring the whole crew hey. back on. See, yeah. can I cram everyone on the screen? Let's see. How many? Can I do it? I'm going to do it. Yeah. Look, yeah. did I do it? Hey. That's, an, that's a really weird, awkward way that they arranged it, but that's fine. That's great. It's cool. So, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your music. Um, I would have a panic attack broadcasting my music live <laughs> and getting be. feedback from a, yeah. a composer like David. So I, my hat's off to you. And um, you know, David. I always find in this situation, when you show your music, however well you've done, and you might think you've got a great piece, as soon as you show it live to somebody else, and, and, and here you are, possibly in front of the whole world, you know, I mean, hats off to you. That's amazing. But as soon as you present it to somebody else, that's when you really hear it. You know, because yeah. you're hearing it almost as, as they do, and that's when you go, should have done that, should have done that, all oh, that's not very, you know, and it's all these things that come around. So I, I do admire everybody is, um, you know, very brave. So thank you very much for sharing. Yes. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you yeah, for, thank you for spending your time with us this afternoon, yeah. evening, morning, and yes. uh, giving these composers some, some feedback on their music. I mean, it's just. It's an amazing opportunity for them, and I was just super excited and grateful to just be even sitting here on the sidelines listening in. So thanks to you uh, and for but everyone. Not like any of these things, when you're listening to what other people have done, it, it, again, it's a great learning experience for me because mm. you start listening to things in a different way, and that's always very helpful. Mm. Awesome. Well, well, folks, um, thank you again for everyone for joining us on the stream. I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast now, but thanks again for joining us if you're watching the replay later. Um, I'm going to send out the links to these composers' tracks via email because I completely fell behind on it in the chat. So I'll send them out later so everyone can go and like and comment and share with their friends and all that fun stuff. But thanks, everyone. Have a thank lovely you. day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. <laughs>